My name is Mike Sullivan. I'm a former IRS agent and teaching instructor for the IRS. I worked there, I don't know, like I said, over a decade. I've worked thousands of cases. I'm a national uh, resolution expert. Um, I've been on Fox, ABC, and most of the major stations. And I, I welcome you to my YouTubes. They're short, they're sweet, to the point. I love comments. You're welcome to ask me questions. I'm happy to help you. Right now, my goal is to level the playing field between you and IRS. With the years of experience, I'm trying to give you information fast and quickly so you know what to do. So how my question to you today and my answer is going to be just as sweet is how do you know when IRS is going to garnish your wages? How do you know when they're going to do that? Um, very easy. IRS is going to send out a particular notice and letter. IRS sends a series of five notices to you. Uh, CP 2000, 501, 503, 504, 1058, and or they could send a CP notice out in replace, maybe a CP 90, CP 91. When you get that, when you get your CP 504 notice, it is a notice of intent to levy. Does IRS levy after that notice? No, they do not levy after that notice. They must send you a notice to file a collection due process hearing. They must do that. When you get the 504, don't go running off the bridge, don't go to your bank. That isn't how it works. When you get the CP 504 or you have a letter that says, these are my collection due process rights, that's when you want to file the collection due process and start up an exit strategy. They will levy generally 30 to 60 days at the end of the 30 days after the 1058. So IRS usually gives you a month to contact them and then the levies automatically go out. And by the way, they're systematic. Not a human hand touches this. No one's working your case. The computer just generates thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of these of these wage garnishments out every single day. So once again, you're going to get a 1058 or an, an L, uh, LT90. It's letting you know you can file a collection due process. You don't do that. IRS will wait 30 to 60 days, and then they're going to garnish your wages. It's, that's how it works. How do you stop that? Just pick up the phone, call them. Say, hey, IRS, stop doing this. What's IRS going to do? They're going to want a current financial statement, a 433A or a 433F. The 433A is if an RO has the case, local office, not good, or the ACS, which wants the 433A calling service centers. Okay, so you have to be prepared to give them, call them, give them a 433F, and along with that 433F, which is their financial statement, you can get it online. They're going to want you to document it bank statements, they're going to want to know what your expenses are, and then they're going to want your pay stub to make sure they're in order, and they're going to close your case. The two most popular closing methods is they're going to go ahead and put you either in hardship or non-collectible, okay, or they're going to ask for a payment agreement. You must have an exit strategy, and you must understand the IRS financial statement to have success. If you're not sure, you better call someone. If not, you're going to have a high payment to IRS. If you like this videos, I appreciate you liking me, subscribing to me, and there's a little notice bell. Hit it, and you can get more of my YouTube videos that come out. I appreciate you doing that, and I appreciate you commenting. I'll answer your comments as much as I can and try to help you through this. Anyway, thank you for listening. I always appreciate you.